Good morning, this is uh, Mr. Mike for the Mechanicsburg Learning Center with another episode of Dino a Day. Uh, lovely day outside, looks like we're going to finally have some nice weather here in central Pennsylvania. So I'm excited to do this uh, presentation for you because this is number 30, number 30 in our long, uh, long-winded lockdown. So if you're looking for something fun to do, tune in every day on Facebook, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Just go to facebook.com slash MLC kids, which is Mechanicsburg Learning Center. So without further ado, let's jump right into today's animal. It is called Pachyrhinosaurus. I believe this is yet another animal that deserves a lot more fame. Now, a couple years ago, they did make a little animated film about an animal, and the star was Pachyrhinosaurus, but it still doesn't roll off the tongue like other famous dinosaurs do. So that's why we're here to make sure that you guys... Uh, are apprised of every single cool animal that's been discovered. So, here's what Pachyrhinosaurus looked like. Right off the bat, you can tell it's related to uh, Triceratops, but it has some very, very distinct differences. So, let's look closely. Obviously, it's shaped like Triceratops overall. Kind of a short tail. It was about uh, 25, 26 feet long, fully grown. There are three different species discovered so far. So as I said uh, in other episodes, you have Pachyrhinosaurus, blunt, Pachyrhinosaurus, blunt, and Pachyrhinosaurus, blunt, third different name. So they all are slightly different, and it all has something to do with this really crazy thing that you see right here. This is known as a nasal boss. Seriously, nasal boss. Now, it didn't have horns on its nose or horns over its eyes like your typical famous Triceratops did, but this certainly had some really cool ornamentation. Uh, this, as we have discussed before, and you know what that's called, that's called a frill, and it had a couple of horns up here, interesting horn here, and once again, the nasal boss. This was discovered, this animal was discovered by a famous bone digger named uh, Charles Sternberg. Not to be confused with his father, which was Charles H. Sternberg. This is Charles M. Sternberg. Now, Dad, Charles H., actually collected for famous paleontologists uh, O.C. Marsh and Edward Drinker Cope out of Philadelphia. So Sternberg was very accustomed to digging up bones, and his sons caught the fever, and Charles M. Sternberg went on to discover some dinosaurs of his own, actually naming Pachyrhinosaurus. So this was discovered in 1946, named in 1950, and as I mentioned earlier, three different species of the genus Pachycephalosaurus have been uh, identified. In uh, the 1980s, they discovered a treasure trove of bones. It was more like a, a dinosaur graveyard, where they discovered over 3,500 bones of this species from juveniles to adults to babies all sorts of different ages so it was obvious that this uh, animal traveled in packs kept its family together keep it safe and besides the 3500 bones what was great was they discovered 14 different skulls so they could see how the skull changes a little bit as the animal ages so even though it didn't have the famous triceratops horns it did have a couple of those cool horns on the top I did a little sketch for you last night to give you an example of what I think Pachyrhinosaurus might have looked like. And hopefully you can see that. We'll zoom in, in, in on it when we do the poem here in just a minute. So as I mentioned, it was about 26 feet long, named uh, in the 1950s. And they s discovered so many bones, it was pretty easy to figure out what it looked like as it grew up. But that's not always the case. You know, as I said before, sometimes they have to name an entire species or a particular genus based on just one single bone. So it's nice when you have an awful lot of bones to compare. The animal lived somewhere in the neighborhood of 72 to 68 million years ago. Now let's return to the very beginning. The name, Pachy, <laughs> Pachycephalosaurus. I want to call it Pachycephalosaurus because it's Pachy. Pachyrhinosaurus. Rhino, if you've heard before, means nose. Pachy means thick. So this is thick-nosed lizard. And the thing that makes it very, very interesting is this little nasal boss. Uh, so like the Pachycephalosaurus, we felt that maybe these things butted heads. Uh, conjecture back and forth on Pachycephalosaurus, whether it butted heads. 
Now they're kind of thinking that it didn't because it was too fragile. But they are thinking that our old friend Pachyrhinosaurus did butt heads. So here is the story of the Pachyrhinosaurus. How many dinosaurs would you recall if I would ask? Most folks would quake with fear and might not live up to the task. Of course, T-Rex would top the list, most famous of them all. But could you name a dozen, or at five, would you hit the wall? The Pachyrhinosaurus is just a starting to attain a notable ex existence that might occupy your brain. Its cousin, the Triceratops, commands the public's view. But this guy had the kind of face you'd pay attention to. Triceratops had horns above his eyes and on his nose. The Pachyrhinosaurus felt he had no need for those. Instead, he had a nasal boss that rested on his snout. We wondered if that was the place from which a horn would sprout. But we have found so many skulls that now we can attest. It never had a horn on there. That rumor's put to rest. He did maintain a pair of horns, but they dressed up his frill. Impressing ladies was their job. They weren't designed to kill. So if another fellow tried to challenge him to fight, he'd butt him in the head with all his dino force and might. The nasal boss most likely took the brunt of every bout whenever he decided that he must display some clout. The Pachyrhinosaurus had an ornamental head. He could have had a boring one, but chose this one instead. So why don't we agree it's time this dino got his due? T-Rex is number one, but can we shoot for number two? The Pachyrhinosaurus, a new poem by Mr. Mike, soon to be illustrated in a big way. Pachyrhinosaurus. So thanks so much for sharing these videos. Thanks so much for watching them on YouTube at Mr. Mike Scrignoli. Thanks to the Mechanicsburg Learning Center for making this all possible. That's episode number 30, Mr. Mike's Dino a Day from the Mechanicsburg Learning Center. Let's do it again live tomorrow on Facebook at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And until then, enjoy yourself and wash your hands.